Does new 118th Congress represent America? The short answer is no, and here's why. Last night, we reported the ominous warning that the MAGA squad, the 20 most radically right of the GOP congressional delegation in the House, represents a threat to the LGBTQ plus community. Because of Kevin McCarthy's concessions to this most anti-LGBT group in Congress in order to be elected Speaker of the House, they have newfound power to guide legislation and policy. This is now history and a fact. Queer News Tonight continues our reporting on this brand new 118th Congress. Tonight, we provide analysis on if, regardless of your political party, do they represent America? And especially, do they represent the LGBTQ plus community? The answer is clearly no. The latest Gallup poll, for example, of Congress reveals just 22% of Americans approve of this new Congress. An astounding 73% disapprove. Let's look at other leading indicators of this new 118th Congress. In terms of gender, it far exceeds male representation. Men make up 72% of this Congress, while just 49% of the U.S. population. Conversely, women make up just 28% of Congress and 51% of the U.S. population. In terms of race, it far exceeds white representation. White makes up 74% of this new Congress, while just 59% of the U.S. population. Black is 11% of Congress and 14% of the U.S. population. But the worst of all is Hispanic, which is 10% of Congress, while its U.S. population is nearly double that at 19%. In terms of religion, the numbers get worse. Christians represent 88% of Congress compared to just 63% of the U.S. population. Interestingly, unaffiliated with any religion represents just 0.2% of the 118th Congress, while 29% of U.S. population say they have no affiliation with religion at all. It will not surprise you that Congress is getting older. The average House representative and senator is 10 years older than Congress was just in 1982, and this 118th is the oldest in history. And that is bad for LGBTQ+, as baby boomers represent the least acceptance of the queer community. And in terms of LGBT, just 2% of Congress represent queer community while the U.S. population is estimated between 7 and 10 percent. The dysfunction we witnessed in 15 ballots to get a speaker for the 118th Congress is just the beginning of what the LGBTQ plus community is going to face in the next two years. The control of radical voices will be louder and stronger against the queer community, while Congress becomes whiter, more male, more religious, and more Christian. And the 118th Congress is the transition, remember, to the 2024 presidential election with a GOP candidate that will likely be either Donald Trump or Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis. Does this Congress represent America? The answer seems to be clearly no. And you know, one of the things that that jump off the page of this new analysis summary that we do of the 118th is I'm not surprised the white, I'm not surprised about the male, I'm not surprised about um, uh, the race. What does surprise me about is religion. Um, the, the statistic that overwhelmingly, more than two-thirds, are identifying as Christian. So it's not that you're religious, you've got to be my religion, right. uh, which is Christian, and that uh, equally significant and even more astounding to me is only point. Uh, 0.2% identify as having no religious affiliation, while 29% of all mm. Americans feel that. So that means this uh, overwhelming majority is going to force view as a representative in Congress on people that don't have the same views as well, they have. I think I also, also want to point out that politically, atheism, almost it's almost like talking about Social Security. It's a, 
is the bloody third rail because people don't want to think about their representative as quote unquote godless. Mm. There seems to be a hang up in yeah. American culture that where the lack of religion makes you less trustworthy. It doesn't matter if you worship the right. flying spaghetti monster, but <laughs> that's sticking to a religion seems or, to be a thing. Or the president at Liberty University, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is basically the same thing. Yeah. Well, I also think that if you look at uh, atheists, there's probably a very low um, propensity for voting, um, which we know that Christian voters have a have been pushed to the polls for all of these issues, including abortion. Um, so it's, it wasn't shocking to me to see the overrepresentation of Christianity because we know that there are voters. Right. Um, that is what motivates them to vote, where um, atheists are probably less motivated by those type of issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would also take it one step further that it's not just Christianity, it's, a, it's evangelicalism, right? Like, so it's, mm -hmm. it's also like if we look at the reflection of, of how it's mirrored in the U.S. Supreme Court, um, increasingly with the presence of Catholics on the U.S. Supreme Court, which is not what, you know, like that is a, the Supreme Court, much like Congress, doesn't represent what the United States looks like. Um, so that is not just, you know, it's another branch of government now that is also disproportionately not looking like the, the United States it was, itself. It was shocking to the United States that Kennedy was a Catholic. Right. Right. Back in the day. And now we have uh, Catholics overwhelmingly on the Supreme Court, as you say. Right. Um, but the one number, well, first, this, the, the Congress has never represented what America right. looks like. Yeah. Right. And the one number that I would like to see that's not on here has to do with uh, income. Mm. What do these people make versus what it's actual uh, well, Americans make? I think the Their first, class, yeah. The first, there's a first Zoomer in Congress. I think it represents Central Florida. Yeah. And he was just reported that he couldn't get the rent, he couldn't rent in DC yeah. because his credit was too low. And uh, also, I just want to point out the other thing is that we talk about racial disparity, that, you know, the misrepresentation. But I also want to point out the, that just because someone is of a particular color or particular ethnicity doesn't mean that they work towards right. the, you know, representative views of that sure. particular ethnicity. I mean, <coughs> Clarence Thomas. I was, I, I think we were all thinking it. <laughs> yeah, we got that. It's interesting. Uh, it, 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 the bottom line on our reporting tonight on the analysis of the 118 is we watched the January 6th uh, mm -hmm. mess uh, in the mm -hmm. 15th ballot and very likely the representation of what we're going to watch in the next two years is not particularly good news for the LGBTQ I, community. And that's, yeah. and that's the situation that we're, anyone. that we're in. <laughs> LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.